I kind of love this game, and I always feel the need to qualify that love. I'm well aware of the problems that people have with this game, but I still find myself coming back to it every couple years or so. It's just such a fun, chill experience, the incredible animations still hold up to this day, and as stated in a previous video, I love the way that the core relationship is portrayed in the gameplay. In fact, consider this video something of a short supplemental to my What Makes a Good Companion video as I intended to talk about this game more, but didn't want to get too off topic. Besides, it involves a moment that I love so much that I figured it deserved its own video. So, what are we waiting for? Throughout the game, you have to face off against four main enemies. The Warrior, the Alchemist, the Hunter, and, important for today's video, the concubine, a trickster who has something of a fascination with the prince, and jealousy of Elika, as she frequently incapacitates her, forcing you to fight solo. After beating her up a few times, you finally corner her in a tower near the end of the game, where for the most part, things are rather standard. You fight her, she babbles on, you climb the tower, so on and so forth, though then you reach the top of the tower where she changes things up a little. No, 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 you chose her. So choose her. This is something of a continuation of what the concubine has been doing for the entire game. You attack her illusions a few times until she finally reveals herself. Though this time, for obvious reasons, you are a little reluctant to get your sword out and start whacking away. So you just sort of wander about trying to suss things out when you start to realise that this might be a puzzle. Okay, I'll stop right here and say that while there aren't really any story spoilers in this video, if you're the sort that doesn't like having puzzles solved for you, then, well, you've been warned. After running about for a bit and hearing the concubine give you little hints towards the solution, How will you prove yourself to her? You may well decide purely out of habit or lack of patience to attack. Though nothing much changes. Part of what makes this puzzle fun and frustrating in equal measure is the escalation of your thought process, starting inquisitive as you investigate the scene, then experimenting as you finally decide to take your sword out, then upping the experiments by attacking all the illusions, then just desperately looking for anything to interact with. You really are willing to try anything just to proceed, and it's that escalation that will likely have you arrive at the solution. Have you got it yet? Time's up. What would you sacrifice for her? This had better work. Ah! <laughs> I knew you'd save me. What if I'd fallen unconscious again? Ha! <laughs> oh, I didn't think of that. As well as just being a fun puzzle to solve. This was the defining moment of the Prince and Elika's relationship. Up until now, they joked, flirted, helped each other out, but this was the moment that finally solidified the trust that they have for each other. Like the ultimate fall back into your partner's arm sort of exercise. The fact that it comes courtesy of someone who is trying to separate our core couple, well, that just makes it more lovely. I had no choice. I have no choice. Winning the resulting boss fight, then escaping the crumbling tower are a rather standard action game sort of affair. But the real victory over the concubine came here, complete with an animation that, by this point, we've come to sort of take for granted and associate with mistimed jumps and failure. Lots and lots of failure, and turn it into a victory screen of sorts, if only briefly. Even in a game where death is largely taken out of the equation, having to force yourself to jump off a tower towards your doom is a rather strange, daunting experience. It's antithetical to the way we usually play games. We're supposed to succeed and survive, not toss ourselves towards death. Oh, you're heavier than you look. With the benefit of hindsight, this may all seem rather simple, but in the moment you're not sure what to do. 
and I love how the game doesn't spell things out for you, no matter how long you run about in circles. Given the lack of options and the lack of handrails, it trusts that eventually, for one reason or another, you'll figure things out. While somewhat well received upon its release, I really wish that Prince of Persia did better, as instead of getting a follow-up, Ubisoft seemed more interested in pumping out Assassin's Creed games year after year. Well, not this year, but you get my point. I personally would much rather see a sequel to this game that builds on the strengths and works on the weaknesses. I'd like to see what happens next in this world, but unfortunately I don't think we'll be seeing this Prince or Elika anytime soon. See, you don't always have to wait for things. You have to make them happen. Is that so? Look around you. We could die in the next five minutes. Then where would waiting have got you? <laughs> I'd rather die trying than waiting. Maybe you're right. If you want something, if you really want something, you shouldn't wait. Yeah? So? What are we waiting for? Hey, oh, <laughs> just banged my head against the laptop. Maybe I'll still use this take. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more and all that stuff. I was out of commission for a bit for technical reasons, but I'm back now and have a lot of ideas planned for the future. So stay tuned and I'll see you soon.